Welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to take a closer look at Qualcomm, ticker QCOM. Yesterday, the company announced a new CPU for the laptop market. And let me just say this. They say that if that is faster than any Apple product right now. It's faster than any Intel product. It's faster than any AMD product in the kind of laptop space. So in today's episode, I want to take a closer look at this new product and just kind of share my overall thoughts. So let's get started. So first, I want to start off with price action. We can see Qualcomm right now, ticker QCOM, is sitting at roughly $109. Year to date, the stock is pretty much flat up only 2%. This is completely underperforming the semiconductor market. One of the main reasons is this is a company that's mainly dependent on the mobile space at the moment, right? They are kind of expanding into other regions, but regardless, even if they are expanding at the moment, most of their financials and fundamentals depend on the mobile business. And the mobile business is still a little bit weaker than anticipated, mainly due to kind of the lack of growth that we're seeing in places like China at the moment. So we can see year to date, the stock is up barely, um, where I believe most of the semiconductor space is up almost over 30 to 40% at the moment. But what I really want to take a closer look at today is Qualcomm. They believe that they are now the new CPU king when it comes to the mobile market, right? It's not for desktops, but this is in the laptop in the mobile market. They do mention that performance is reborn with their Snapdragon X Elite. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about the Snapdragon X Elite, but if you are familiar with Snapdragon and their platform, right? Their platform consists of numerous, numerous chips. I wanna thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for their subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Their platform has CPUs, GPUs, DPUs, Wi-Fi chips, and everything, right? So that's an at Qualcomm's platform. When you look at their platform, it's something, it's like a full package of numerous chips. But first, what we are gonna take a closer look at is their CPU within the Snapdragon X Elite. And that CPU is called the Qualcomm Orion. Um, and we can see they do mention that this chip is faster than any leading ARM compatible competitor. And the only really leader out there in the ARM based market is Apple. They do kind of take a closer look at single threaded CPU performance. Um, and we can see it is outperforming the M2 Max. Uh, remember the M2 Max, I do believe came out uh, less than a year ago. And we do have Apple coming out with an event in the upcoming in the upcoming week where they are gonna showcase maybe their next generation uh, of chips. So. Um, this right now is taking a closer look at the M2 Max, but if um, Apple is expected to release the M3 chip come, uh, soon, this might have to be something different, uh, right? But they do mention that, hey, look, our CPU performance on single thread is amazing. And what I really am excited about this, and we're going to see in a bit, this is Qualcomm's first laptop CPU, right? This is their first generation, generation one. And normally when you look at generation one, you don't really compare it to the top dogs. You usually compare it to maybe the entry level, you maybe compare it to the mid level, but no, Qualcomm is saying that, hey, look, coming out, even though this is our first generation, we are better than the top players. Uh, so obviously we have to wait for laptops and products to come out for us to really test it out because these are internal tests, um, but regardless, they are making some bold bold claims the other things that they are mentioning is that for them to they, they are faster in forms of single performance peak performance right but they mention if they want to match the peak performance of their competitors they could actually do it with 30 percent less power than their uh 30 percent less power right so that is insane and we are show, seeing the kind of strength that arm solutions have not only are they able to kind of have some strong performance we've seen it with the m2 max but we're also seeing kind of that power efficiency outside of that qualcomm wanted to make sure that hey we are the leaders here so we wanted to showcase that they are the leaders in x86 cpu so x86 cpu is the architecture that intel and amt use and they mentioned that right now the leader in that space is the i9 13980hx um, again these are compute our, our laptop mobile cpus uh, and they mentioned that in single thread cpu performance they are faster by a bit, right? I, I believe that's probably closer to maybe one, 1% 1 faster. Um, the chart makes it seem a little bit different, but I do believe in forms of number, it's about 1% faster. Regardless, that is still 
pretty, pretty impressive, especially because they can match competitors' peak performance at 70% less power. And this is kind of the strength of ARM-based solutions at the moment is definitely that power efficiency. Uh, so I think that's pretty insane. Again, kind of mentioning Qualcomm chips are coming out later this year and Intel is coming out with their 14, with their, uh, what, what is it? Not, is it Meteor Lake? Uh, Meteor Lake uh, on December 14th, uh, which is going to be a mobile chip that includes a lot of AI solutions. So um, we do have more chips coming out from Intel the moment that Qualcomm is also expected to release their Orion CPU. Uh, so uh, right off the bat, we can see that these are some pretty cool claims from Qualcomm. And it does get me super excited because we are kind of seeing this shift in the market right now where... Um, Intel is definitely seeing strong competition. We're seeing more players enter the CPU space. And I do believe that bodes well for the consumers, uh, especially um, because it's going to force all these companies to continue to have a competitive pace. Uh, so innovation, in my opinion, is going to continue to grow at great levels. Now, I do want to say thank you guys for the support. We just hit 28,400 subs in this channel. I'm trying to hit 30,000 by the end of the year. So if you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. I do have a semiconductor membership program here on YouTube where I do weekly exclusive videos. Right now, we're doing deep dives on earnings. We've done um, Qualcomm in the past. Click join to learn more. Special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Free newsletter at josenaharo.substock.com and free semiconductor news at semiconductorwatch.com. So now let's take a closer look at Qualcomm continuing to be the CPU king. Uh, like I mentioned, right, this platform of, of the Snapdragon X Elite is more than just one thing, right? It's not just a CPU. We're going to see it's a DP, it's a NPU and a GPU and so much more. Uh, outside of that, they're also going to bring this experience this great CPU into the mobile platform in 2024. So we can see how Qualcomm is kind of enter different market opportunities with this great CPU. Uh, so they are going to bring the Qualcomm Orion this generation to the mobile platform in 2024. But kind of let's go back here into the Snapdragon X Elite. They do mention that the system on chip is a four nanometer chip, uh, the best in the class 12 core. And this is pretty interesting, right? Because Apple just released their chip um, and that is expected to be in the three nanometer. We see a three nanometer on the phone base. So we do expect very similar for the M3 and maybe the M3 Max is also gonna be a three nanometer, but Qualcomm decided to go with the four nanometer system on chip. And overall, they're still providing some great, great solutions. Uh, they do mention that, hey, look, we have a GPU, the Adreno GPU, and that's delivering stunning graphics for immersive entertainment. Uh, so we do see their CPU, their GPU, but more importantly, they do have an N CPU, which is great for AI solutions. And this is something that they've been building for the past decade. So Qualcomm does mention that they do believe that they are the leaders in AI solutions. Um, now here, if we take a closer look at the Snapdragon X Elite, uh, they do mention that, hey, look, with when, when we're looking at GPU, when we're looking at CPU, um, we, they believe that it's up to two times faster than CPU performance versus competition at ISO power. Uh, and here the competition is a 12 core i7-1360p and a i7-1350-55U. Uh, and it matches competitors peak performance at 68% less power and again they do mention that they're fi faster 50 percent faster peak multi-threaded cpu performance versus the apple m2 uh, next we're going to take a closer look at the gpu they do mention that their integrated gpu the arduino is also some strong solutions here they're not going to showcase it versus any nvidia products right you're going to see it more with integrated solutions not discrete si solutions uh, if you're an nvidia investor you don't have to worry <laughs> nvidia is still the king here uh, but they do mention that their integrated gpu is two times faster uh, than what is inside the i7 131800H. So overall, we are seeing strong performance. And look, they even mentioned that their GPU is about 80% faster than what is inside um, the Ryzen 9 7940HS. Remember, these are all laptop CPUs with integrated GPUs. So overall, we are seeing some great moves and some great numbers from Qualcomm. But like I mentioned earlier,
early on, these are supposed to be taken with a grain of salt to some extent because these are Qualcomm numbers. We're going to have to wait till the products released in early in late 2023, early 2024 till we really get to see some benchmarks. But overall, this does kind of get me excited for Qualcomm overall. I do believe one way or another, Qualcomm is trying to challenge Apple as well. So Snapdragon and Windows are partnering up and Snapdragon, Windows and Meta are partnering up. This is, they're, they're trying to bring kind of PC stream, uh, kind of bring like streaming to the virtual reality where you can kind of have like a workstation on, on, on your headset. Doesn't this sound very similar to like the Spatial X or whatever Apple just released? So I do believe Snapdragon is trying to challenge Apple in numerous ways. Here we can kind of see this is wearing the virtual reality and someone just has kind of the... Um, the 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 workstation that they want uh so here kind of I'd like I mentioned I do believe they're trying to combat against Apple one way or another another thing is that app um, Qualcomm chips are actually used in a lot of different products even though Qualcomm itself doesn't necessarily make all these products for example we can see earbuds um that Qualcomm doesn't make, but you have earbuds that are using Qualcomm's audio solutions. You have numerous smartwatches, numerous AR glasses like Meta's AR glasses, and like we saw, laptops. So what Qualcomm is actually doing, it's making a very efficient way, an easy way for you to connect all your devices that use Qualcomm chips and kind of integrate them well with each other. Hey, you have on your laptop and you want to send something to maybe your phone that has a Snapdragon chip, or maybe your tablet that has a Snapdragon chip or a Qualcomm chip, right? You're able to do it a lot easier nowadays um, with what they call um, Qualcomm Snap Ease, I believe. Here during the during the event, they kind of showcase a Snapdragon laptop, a tablet that uses a Snapdragon, and a phone that uses a Snapdragon, and they were able to transfer files seamlessly um, because they are on, all under the Snapdragon ecosystem. So this sounds very, very fam some familiar to what Apple does nowadays. So I do believe Qualcomm is stepping their game up. One, they're coming in here in the premium market, right? We did see those performance, those performance performance are as a premium chip. The second thing is we are seeing kind of this connectivity um, and e-solution with all other Qualcomm products, even though Qualcomm doesn't make all these products, right? Qualcomm doesn't make AR glasses. They make the chips for AR glasses. They don't make smartwatches. They make the chips for smartwatches. There's other companies, other OEMs that make these solutions, but yet because they are under the Qualcomm ecosystem, they will be able to integrate pretty, pretty easily. The final thing I want to take a closer look at is PE ratio. We can see forward one year PE ratio is closer to 10.8. PE ratio forward is 11.9. In my opinion, Qualcomm is sitting at a very, very cheap price. We do see that this is mainly a mobile space, but I do see this kind of really moving into the Apple direction. Um, obviously, this is a lot cheaper than Apple, but rightfully so. Apple has plenty of cash flow, plenty of cash. You can't really compare them side by side, um, but I do believe Qualcomm can definitely benefit from the move that they are making right now. Um, and especially that we are expecting to see this PC uptrend. We hit the bottom in the PC cycle, and now we're going to be in the nice up cycle. And this nice up cycle is when Qualcomm is releasing these chips. So that can overall bode well for the company. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.